Hello and welcome back to Explain 11 everybody and today I'm going to be sharing five more tips for beginners in Explain. Although if you've been around a while you might learn something also. If you haven't already go and check out my first video where I did five tips for Explain beginners. I'll put the link down in the description. Also make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm that would help me out a lot. But with all that said, let's get into it. Okay, everybody, the first tip is how do you determine the win direction? Now, this is really important because, as you probably know, you need to take off and land into the wind. So it's pretty important to know which direction it's coming from. Now, I'm going to show you three ways you can find out where the wind's coming from. And the first is probably the easiest. All you need to do is press M for map on your keyboard there. And then zoom into the aerodrome where you're currently sitting. And so I'm at Revelstoke here in Canada. So I click on the airport and click on the details tab. And right here gives me a weather report. And included in there is the wind. Wind 140 at 15. That's a magnetic direction. At 15 knots, that's the strength of the wind. So a reasonably brisk breeze here. Nothing too major though. And of course, if I look at the runways available, runway 12 is the most suitable for my takeoff at this point, given the wind direction. Now the second way you can determine wind direction is go up the top here to the flight configuration. You would have been in this screen when you set up your flight. And if you go to the customize uh, tab right there, and if you look down the bottom here, it's got the wind direction at ground level 140 at 15. So it's a little bit, a few more clicks here to get to that, but that's another way that you can uh, check out the wind direction. And of course, if you've got it on, um, if you're configuring the weather yourself or got it on real world weather conditions, you can quickly check that before you start your flight and then you know straight away before you get into your aircraft. Now the third way, probably the most uh, difficult, but a little bit more old fashioned is Let's jump out of uh, the aircraft and you can just walk over to the windsock here. Here it is. It's a little bit old fashioned, but just looking at the direction of the windsock. So the skinny end is uh, where the wind is flowing to. So it goes in this end and out this. So at the moment, if we just hover around, sorry, my mouse skills right here. Oh, Mace, what are you doing? Okay, that was an average effort on my behalf, but I finally got in line with the windsock. But as you can see, the wind is blowing this way here, down the runway, left to right as we are looking. So we want to be taking off uh, right to left, and uh, that's runway 1-2. So that's a good old-fashioned way to find out which way the wind direction is blowing. And obviously something you would use in real life when you're sitting there on the runway, uh, just to double-check that the meter that you're getting is correct. The next tip is, what is leaning your mixture and how do you do it? Well, essentially leaning your mixture is getting the air and the fuel ratio right depending on which altitude you are flying. So basically the air gets thinner as you get higher. So it actually makes sense to thin out your mixture using this little red knob here if you're in the Cessna 172. And uh, because if you don't lean it out correctly and get the right mixture, it can do things like foul up your plugs, uh, you can get loss of power. Um, and by leaning that mixture correctly, it also helps you by increasing your fuel efficiency. It can help with cooling and a few other things like that. So here I am, I'm cruising along at about 5,000 feet there or thereabouts. And so the best way to figure out what the best fuel mixture ratio is, is just basically grab the fuel lever, uh, sorry, the mixture lever, just ease it back slowly until the revs drop completely away. There, we had it there. So we just push it back in a quarter of a turn there, a quarter of a push. And there we go, right there. So once again, you pull back your mixture lever till the engine basically decides to give up and then push it back in a little bit more. And that's about the right level for your fuel mixture. Then you just gotta make sure your revs are right then. I'm on 2300, that's fine, it's in the green. Uh, 2400 is probably around about where I want to be. I can adjust that later. So it is really as simple as that. Okay, the next tip is about the replay system and it's more specifically how to turn the HUD on and off but also how to turn replays on and off because if you're like me, you might want to take some screenshots or do some videos and you want to use a replay feature to get the best angle and all that sort of stuff. So to turn the replay feature on, it's already inbuilt into X-Plane, press Alt-R and here we are in the replay. So as you can see, it's paused on the replay and we can go back in time and 
pick a spot that we like and here we are here i was doing a medium turn so that's nice and easy but what you might find is you go okay great i want to take a screenshot so i get rid of the hud that's the x up there boom and then you go great i'll take that screenshot and fantastic now i just want to continue the replay and and, and take a few more uh, pictures and then you go well how do i bring the hud back up this is something i only learned very recently by the way what you're actually going to have to do, everybody, is you're going to have to assign a key to control the HUD because it's not automatically set up when you get X-Plane. So what you need to do, you go up here to the settings um, and you need to go to keyboard up the top here, then go to the replay part of, this is basically where you set up all the keys within the uh, simulator. Go to replay and then right down here, replay mode, toggle controls visibility. It is as easy as that. Now I've gone ahead and assigned shift control R, but obviously you can assign it to your mouse, to your keyboard, to your joystick, whatever you want to do. There are a bunch of other keys within the replay feature that you can assign, but this is the, the main one that I, that I want to focus on here. So I've gone ahead and changed that to control shift R. So here I am, I'm thinking I want to continue this video, so I press control shift R, brings back up the HUD, there you go, and I can either play it, there I am, I can play it, zoom out, find another better angle, pause it, or whatever, you know, go whatever wherever I want to in the video right here. So nice and easy. Once again, go and assign the key so you can show the controls and that way you're not going to be lost when you uh, get rid of it and want to bring it back up again. Because by the way, if you press just Alt-R, I'll show you right here, I go Alt-R, there we go, I'm back live flying now. So it actually just turns the replay feature right off. It doesn't just reset the HUD. So once again, Alt-R to go into replay and control shift ah uh, there we go easy as that okay tip number four everybody reverse thrust now this is something that you're going to need when you start flying the bigger aircraft like this polis a319 and essentially i'll show you how it works you bang it on just after you land and it's going to help you slow down quite quickly now in x-plane uh, the thrust reverses aren't assigned automatically so you're going to have to go and do it yourself but there's probably three ways to go about this. Firstly, if you're in the cockpit, if you look down at your throttle quadrant, you can just simply grab it and pull it back down into the reverse thrust part. As you can see, they're open. I'll go there and put it back up. But obviously, if you're trying to fly the airplane, looking down and trying to do that, it can be a bit of a mission. So what you want to do is, depending on whether you've got a joystick or a key, just using keyboard with other flight controls, you probably want to assign just one button to make those open. So what you need to do is go up into your settings. Uh, if you're gonna use the keyboard, you go to keyboard and uh, engines, then basics I would recommend. And if you just scroll down, you can see you've got toggle thrust reverses right here. Assign whatever key pattern you want to assign to that and then away you go. So we've got shift control F1. If I go shift control F1, bump outside right here and there you go, they're open. Shift control F1 and they are closed. Now, if I decide to, uh, now there are a few ways you can, or a few places I should say, where you can go ahead and um, assign those. So if you go into the throttle part too, you can actually assign uh, reverse thrust down in this part. And uh, you can either uh, do, uh, you know, depending on which engine you want it to assign it to, you can have multiple keys for multiple sort of reverses, but it becomes a little bit complex, I reckon. So the next best thing to do, I reckon, is if you've got a joystick, Right here, I'm just using the good old Extreme 3D Pro in this case here. And if you scroll down, oh, it's already scrolled down, but look at button 15 over here. And I've got the toggle thrust reverses set to that button right there. So if I go out of that, let's get outside the aircraft and press that 15 key. There it goes, opens up nice and easily. And if you are using a joystick, joystick I'd highly recommend it having it uh, assigned to one of the buttons. Uh, that is easy to reach so when you come in and you're trying to focus on you know nailing that butter landing you can quickly press the reverse thrusters and you don't have to worry about it so there you go ladies and gentlemen tip number four okay the fifth and final tip everybody is make sure you go and check out the x-plane 11 desktop manual if you have a look up the top here the url is right up there xplane.com slash manual slash desktop and i highly recommend that you take the time to read through this. It's got a bunch of really, really useful information, particularly when you're starting out, that's gonna give you an in-depth understanding of many facets of the X-Plane Simulator. It's got a great 
uh, quick start guide in there right through to advanced simulation and x-plane so you can sort of step through all the different things you need to do to build up to really get the most out of this simulator it talks through a bunch of the different features that are available and look i know reading through manuals sometimes isn't the most exciting thing there are obviously a lot of youtube videos out there that are probably a little bit more entertaining to look through but i would highly recommend taking the time to go through the main points of this manual and you'll be really surprised at what you actually pick up it's available in a different uh, bunch of different languages so uh, if you need it and it uh, looks like it's got uh, german french spanish japanese and chinese so there's a few different languages there for those that uh, have those as their first uh, language but there you go ladies and gentlemen five tips for beginners in explain i hope you did enjoy them Make sure once again that you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you are new and also everybody throw your comments in down below. Let me know some of the cool tips that you have while playing X, that you've learned I should say by playing X-Plane 11. Share them with everybody and until next time everybody, take it easy.